So, welcome again. It's me again, Margaret. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is an ancient, ancient shitpost, by the way. So, power to anybody that, that actually um, knows that artist. Uh, so, yes. So, it is Tiny. Hey, Shy Fire. How you doing? Hey, everybody. Hey, Biggest Bugus and everyone else. So... My name is Manatee Outlaw, a.k.a. Tiny Prancing Horse, a.k.a. Uh, if you knew me on 4chan when I was writing for 4chan, uh, <laughs> uh, that would be as um, Brand New Right Fag. Um, and I... Eh, well, how, how do we want to start this? So this is... Uh, this is a How to Turn Your Passion into Business uh, panel. So at an incredibly high level, we will be doing a bit of a master class on, hey, Tiny, I'm already writing, or I'm drawing a comic, or I'm making music, or something like that. How do I turn that into uh, money? And so that's sort of what, what I'm here for. Uh, a little bit about me before we sort of dive into it. So uh, again, the series that I do is called They Are Small, and I'm just going to post it in here just so you can see that it's a real thing and you'll notice there's discord links twitter links and patreon links you go to the patreon i'm at about eight hundred dollars a month give or take um so i'm not saying i am by any means you know making fifty thousand dollars a year off of this and living completely off of it and yada yada but you know uh, an extra ninety six hundred bucks a year is nothing to sneeze at so just this year so by the way that $800 a month has just been word of mouth advertising. We are now moving to actually recycling some ad, some revenue into ads, and so we're going to see how well that goes. So if I am invited back to uh, the Van Hoover Pony Expo for 2022, um, I'll let you guys know, and we'll make that happen. So a little bit about me uh, is that, yes, I, I am a writer, and I am making some money off of the writing, um, but also at a high level. Um, I am a small business owner. Um, I am a financial planner. I am licensed for insurance, annuity, long-term care. Uh, currently knocking out the SIE in Series 6 and Series 7, uh, but that should be done within the next 45 days. So I do money and all of that stuff for a living, and then I do this sort of stuff for fun and I'm able to make a little bit of a profit off of it. So, for this panel, it's going to be a little bit weird, um, but I not only am, am willing and able and encourage uh, questions, so if you're like, hey, I don't know how to find my target audience, or hey, I want to do this or that or the other, I would be more than happy to answer that for you. If you do have finance-based questions as well, um, how do I build and accumulate wealth? How do I protect wealth from financial shocks or from uh, shocks to the market? How do I reduce my tax burden? I can sort of help you there. I am not a CPA. Uh, I'm not a tax professional. So I'm going to go ahead and give you that full and fair disclosure there. If you're going to ask me, hey, can I, can I write this off on my taxes or can I do that? The answer is no. And then, of course, because uh, I know this is the Van Hoover, uh, your mileage may vary if you are Canadian. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, it, it is what it is. I'm down here in the U.S. of A. Uh, our great snowy hat has different laws and regulations and all that other good stuff. So, um, that being said, let's just go ahead and I'm going to see whether or not... Hey, there we go. All right. Uh, and let me just make sure that it is actually going to switch over. I hope it is. Sorry, I've never, I've never done this street. Yeah, it, okay, so it is a, a multi-second uh, delay. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to, to sort of see how all this works. So um, let's go ahead and just sort of talk about very, very bare, bare bones, basic stuff. Uh, you need to have a home for whatever it is you do. Uh, if you are a writer, if you're a musician, if you are a comic artist, if you make physical products, whatever it is, you need to have a home. And your home will vary based upon what it is you do. Uh, I would not, ex you should not expect me, 
uh, to have a SoundCloud. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm not a musician, but The Living Tombstone should have a SoundCloud. That, that makes a lot of logical sense. Uh, I don't make physical products. I'm not out here making, uh, I guess, pony suits, fur suits, whatever it is. I'm not making plushies. I'm not doing any of that stuff. So I wouldn't have an Etsy. Um, so what you see here is is my my sort of digital home, and it is where I post our art. I post links to the social, and you can see a feed of social media here. I post a link to the Patreon down here. But it is a place where if if you want to find me. Uh, this is where you go and I'm just sort of scrolling through here and there's there's more here I need to update this but the long and short of it is is that you want a home and the reason why you want a home is because you need to have a place to direct people to so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, pull out my tool here so this is uh, called SERP stat uh, and I'm going to ramble a little bit. I'm not looking at the chat right now. But at an incredibly high level, you, you will never... Uh, go away. Stop trying to upsell me. You will never manage and you will never grow what you do not track. So I am over here. And, and again, I paid for SerpStat. There are a lot of free things you can do with Google. Uh, Google Search Console is free. Google AdWords and... Uh, God, what is it? AdSense are free as well. I mean, I would, I would use those. Um, no, don't tell me I'm breaking the system. Come here. What are you doing? Oh, whoops. I'm being silly here. Why is is it all under side audit? Am I really just? Why can I not? Is my stream actually breaking my project? My stream should not be breaking my project. Yeah, I don't know why that happened. Um, but as you see, uh, I'm making sure to rank on on the on the on the terms that matter. Uh, I am position 16 out of just the word "small" for 22,000 volume, which is the number one thing that I'm ranking for. Um, but I'm, I'm trying just to make my way sort of make my way downtown on, on a lot of stuff. And as you see, small is just my straight up main landing page, uh, which is the home page over here. So you want to, and I guess I have to keep going back to my projects because the stream is just being weird. Um, you want to track everything. Um, when I'm looking at issues that I have on the website, I, some of this is broken and that's fine, it doesn't really matter. My SEO score is staying pretty nice. I mean, is it perfect? No, um, but it's definitely up there. Uh, I, I'm making sure that I am paying attention, that I've knocked out all of my, or majority of my high priority problems. Medium priority, as you see, every month I do a little bit better and then knock it down. Low priority is, is not an issue, so. Um, you basically just want to make sure that you are tracking everything. Uh, when you said pony suits, I was immediately thinking about three piece suits with pony patterns. Yes, you must be a dapper, dapper horse. That matters. Um, so I mean, I I don't want to dive too deep into things that that don't matter. You know what I mean? Like if if you guys don't really care about this, if this is sort of like wow, tiny, this is this is basic basic horse stuff 101. I don't really care about it. Um, then, then let me know, and we can sort of we'll, we'll manage with that. But I mean, I like being like being able to see what's going on. So uh, if nobody cares about that, then I'll just sort of move on to some other things uh, that might make a little bit of sense here. Um, but I'll give you a couple couple seconds just to see just to see if there's anything here. You're already lost. Okay. So the basic principle about well I guess I should ask what what has you lost let me not assume that I know what your problem is so what has you lost my friend oh okay the um you don't have to I guess let me let me sort of pull back here I don't want you to get lost in the forest don't don't lose the forest for the trees um, 
I have a program that helps me figure out how well my website is doing, what is linking to my website, what domains are linking to my website, what keywords I am ranking for organically, and what keywords I need help to rank for. The takeaway from just this is that you need to track in order to optimize and you need to have a home on the internet in order to start building a, a an audience so yeah that's that's all that this is uh, I'm, that's that's kind of the thing is like this is going to be a it's a master class but it's a high level one because we don't need to dive into how do i do seo and how do i rank for this keyword and that that's 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 all different but at a basic level if you are a creator and you want to turn this into funds, you want to turn this into a little bit of money, you need a home and you need to be able to track what's happening to your home. My home is the They Are Small website. This thing right here, as you can see, he's right there. Um, so the They Are Small website is my home and I am tracking everything around it. I don't have any paid keywords yet. I'm tracking organic keywords, I'm tracking domains, like you, you, you get the point. So that's basically what I'm trying to do is just show you if you are going to be a creative, if you are going to do something, you need to have a home. And that's not saying that the home can't link to other things. You know, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, I have a YouTube channel, I've got a Discord. Um, I, I post these stories on Archive of Our Own, I post them on Reddit, but they all link back to this home. They all pull back to they are small um, because I want this to be the one record of truth. So that's sort of the, the, the point to that. Um, if you are looking for audience, which I think is sort of everyone's next natural question is just to say, well, um, I have my website tiny or I'm on Spotify or I'm on archive of our own or you know I, I have my place I have my patreon um, so patreon accounts do and don't work as homes so let me uh, let me just go to my is this gonna take me there or is this gonna take me somewhere weird let's find out okay so I, I've dropped a little bit from January that's fine so the deal with uh, Patreons, can I just look at my web? Come on, there we go. So the deal with Patreon and using Patreon as your home uh, is number one, um, I know, I'm sorry, it's, it's just, that's, that's just who we's is. Um, when you get into the, the soup, to nuts like the nuts and bolts bit of your page like not not necessarily income but you see how limited I am here like I can look at my patrons and I'm not going to because there's personally identifiable information there um, but I don't really have the depth that I do here so you can use a patreon page as a as a little stopgap I, I can sort of agree with you on that star pony but at an incredibly high level you you are missing a lot of editability and a lot of work that you can do um, you also run into the problem that if you are uh, boosting your patreon page so patreon.com forward slash tiny prancing horse uh, if you're boosting that as opposed to like you know your own private domain if you are ever deplatformed uh, which you know is not really concern for me but it might be a concern for some people uh, if you are ever deplatformed if you ever decide to move from patreon and I know some people have because I'm grandfathered into an old patreon tier but they, Patreon has changed their tiers. Um, you could be grandfathered in or you could be moved out. Uh, you might want to, you know, if Patreon comes in and tells me, hey, Tiny, we're going to go from a 5% charge to a 10% charge, 
and all of my work, all of my ads, all of my SEO, all of that stuff is pointing to Patreon and I don't own it, it's a lot harder to move that and you're going to naturally lose your audience or part of it as you move to another platform. So can Patreon accounts work as homes? Yes, uh, I wouldn't and I would move towards getting a, a web URL as quickly as humanly possible. Um, they are ex not expensive, they're very cheap. Um, I think I'm paying like five bucks a month in terms of hosting costs and that includes the URL and the SSL certificate and all that other good stuff. I use Namecheap, by the way. Um, so they're, they're very good. I'm not sponsored by them. This, this, this podcast is not sponsored by Rage Shadow Legends either. Like, um, <laughs> but I use Namecheap. They're very good, uh, and I, I would highly recommend them. But long story short, I wouldn't. There's also a bit of a stigma. Uh, if your home is a payment gateway, the immediate thought there is is that I'm going to have to pay to play. And I can't tell you how many times, like, if you go to my Patreon, everything there is free. I literally use Patreon as nothing more than just another archive of the writing that I do. I run on a freemium model. Um, but if I just link to you a Patreon and it's a cold open and you don't really know me, that's going to come across as uh, you need to pay in order to see and in case I I'm not going to go. When should you go from Patreon to your own setup as soon as humanly possible? Um, I will put it this way. Uh, when I started, I started writing on Reddit. I got an audience. I then opened up a Patreon as a tip jar. I ended up getting about $100 a month as my very first month. I took that $100 and the very first thing I did is I used that to subsidize my own URL. I, 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 I mean, it cost me like 200 bucks to pay for the full year, plus a bunch of domains, plus SSL certificates, plus backup hosting. Like, I, I went for the whole thing because I'm not actually, I'm not technically adept. I'm gonna, <laughs> to, to put it very lightly, um, I am bad at computer, so, I sort of went with the whole kind of do it for me thing. Like this is hosted on WordPress. Um, I bought a bunch of, of things that would build WordPress for me so I didn't have to do it myself. Um, no, nothing I have is a subscription-based model. Uh, everything I do is is, is, pre is a free meum, sorry, not premium. So let, let, me, let me answer that for a second actually to, to answer your previous question get your own web domain as soon as humanly possible that is my that is my sincerest recommendation to you um, even if, if you buy a domain name and it's 20 bucks and you just buy the most basic bare bones five dollars a month hosting and that's 60 bucks yeah you're out 80 dollars but that's for an entire year and you you can at least throw links on your website because Google and other web crawlers and search engines not only look at how many people are linking to your website as you see I have 23 um, they not only look at sort of how well you are for SEO and their web crawling but they look at how long has your domain existed so even if you don't have something for the first few days or weeks or even months, the fact that that domain exists and, and is a real thing gives you a little bit of points to Google. So that's just a side note. I would be doing that. I would be doing that immediately. For me, um, so if you go to patreon.com forward slash tiny prancing horse and what we will do is we'll open up an incognitus window just to make sure um yeah i'm 18 or older which is fine and i just do that because i i don't want to so here we are here's my goals everything i do is is open you can read it here uh, you could go to reddit.com and then uh, shark, wow, shark cop, shark cop. Uh, 
I, I guess I didn't rank for it yet. I did do short cop. Let me just pull it from my previous server here. Uh, and then just uh, grab it. Control C, Control V. Um, and as you see here, the entire thing is here. Oh, 183, that's nice. Um, as you see, the entire thing is here. It's, it is a freemium model. Uh, ba -ba -ba, there it is. So light danced across Mona's eyes, light danced across Mona's eyes. Um, it's, it's literally the same thing. So how I do it, and this might not work for you, it all depends upon... Oh! <laughs> oh, well that, that's, that's helpful. Yay! I don't know how to, um... I don't know how to use this streaming software. So, uh, just pretend really hard that that didn't happen. And now you know my, my first name is Eric, so that's fine. Um, but here you go. So, like, light danced across Amona's eyes. And then if we go to my posts, and we go to my publish posts, and we go to short cop, and we view it, we see light danced across Mona's eyes. So it's, for me, I do a freemium model. Um, yeah, I know, I know, Edgy. Uh, so I do a freemium model. So what ends up happening is um, there are some things that are gate-kept, uh, so, for instance, Shark Cop, this, if you are a patron, you get chapters a month in advance. If you're not a patron, you have to wait, but you will get the chapter. It is, it is a, a free thing. Uh, really, I don't know why I'm being pinged, so let me just mute that real quick. Okay, don't matter. Um, you know, it's really funny, just as a complete side note, I did another, uh, panel for, uh, the people that did this, and I actually doxed myself last time, and so it's just one of those things where it's like, hey, let's see if you can do a panel without doxing yourself. I'm like, yeah, okay, and then I tab out, and then there's my first name, and it's like, oh, okay, cool. Um, so, <laughs> so, you know, not not the not the greatest, not not the brightest uh, light bulb in the sock drawer, but, eh, you know, it is what it is. Um, moving on, I wouldn't do Patreon as my main page, uh, I do a freemium model, so you support me and you support my team if you decide to do the Patreon. 90% of the content you will still get. Um, that's right, I'm not, I'm not the sharpest mouse in, in the light bulb manufacturing industrial complex. Um, but anyway, so you... Your mileage may vary. It all depends. Uh, if you look at some of the popular artists out there, uh, and I'm just going to use Bray Burned, because now he's just Bray. He's gone from horse to just furry. Um, you'll notice that, yeah, he's got a Patreon and all that good stuff, but that all leaks. All of it leaks. So instead, he just releases it, and he releases it a month afterwards. So if you're a, if you're a, so I use Namecheap. Uh, Namecheap is is the person is the place I use for everything. Um, they host my WordPress. They host my WordPress backup. I buy my domains from them. Uh, all of that. So it is what it is. Um, but I mean, it all depends on what you're doing. It all really depends on what you're doing. If you are making music, do you? take your tracks that are just straight up bangers and make them free and then the rest of the album you charge for is it a subscription model if you're making art do you just release stuff a month or two weeks after or whatever it is or do you just not and operate your patreon as a tip jar um i mean it all depends and it's all going to depend upon what you feel comfortable with uh you know if if you know uh like Seth Zientanch, I, I'm just saying that just because he's he's a shit poster. Um, but if you look at his stuff, he's got a Patreon, and as far as I can tell, there's no benefit to it. He it is just a pure tip jar, uh, and you can only like do a dollar. But it, it is what it is, you know. And then you you look at like the guy that does um, a crap guide to D and D. I forget his name. Um, but, I mean, he's got multiple different levels, and you can get sketches, and you get your name, and all that other good stuff. So, it, it, it all depends. 
Um, it all depends on your audience. It all depends upon what's comfortable for you. It all depends upon what you're trying to do. So that's just my recommendation. Uh, in terms of, so I'm going to move away from using Patreon here, but please do keep keep asking questions. I'll definitely uh, answer them best of my my knowledge and ability. Um, if we are looking at how do I find people, <laughs> so now we're we're at another we're at another tool. It's just like oh god, what's going on? Um, this is a program called the Wario. Uh, or a Wario, if you call it a Wario, they will probably um, ban you. I don't know. I would personally, um, but this is what is called a social listening platform, and that is incredibly important. And you should write that down: a social listening platform. And what a social listening platform does. I mean, this one especially, is that it listens across all of these networks and across the World Wide Web in general. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, News, and the Web. For my keywords. So, I have one set here. These are the keywords. Riders Lift, Free Book, Must Read, and Lit Chat. That's what I look for. I look for mentions of that. I get rid of these negative keywords. I don't want any of this. I want it in English. I've got it across three countries, all sources over the past seven days. And what that does for me, let me just... Let me in. Fuck off. Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep this as a PG. Um, don't, don't worry, uh, heck off is what I meant to say. Um, but what this does is it allows me to slice and dice everything to the most relevant people and the most relevant conversations. So a science fiction story about giant snake people, giant wolves, and, and giant dinosaurs giving humans head pats does inter I mean, I'm, I'm not foolish, it does intersect with the furry fandom. Like, let's just be honest here. I mean, for God's sake, I'm on a pony server and we're all LARPing as magical pastel marshmallow horses. So, yeah. Um, and so this right here, as you see, furry novel, right here. I mean, it's a visual novel, and it's talking about this, and so it's like, hey, I'm writing fan fiction, I have three stories. If this was something that I would want to reach out to, I can see that it what its reach is. And so this tweet's reach is 320 people. And as you see over here, they've got 318 followers, so that's about right. Do I want to engage with somebody with 318 followers about their own visual novel? Well, no, I don't. And it has a negative sentiment here because I think there's a little bit of negative work or words here. So I'm going to say no, and I delete it, and then I move down. Are there any furry coloring books out there? Small business furry artist coloring books. Well, small business furry artist, eh, maybe I could. 287 people, I'm not interested. This one right here, look at that. Uh, 1.6 thousand. What a furry con yearbook, okay. All right, well that's not relevant to me, though it is nice. Uh, so I'm gonna move out here. And you can just go down this list, and there are some that are good, there are some that are bad. And you can find quote-unquote leads. Ha! The meme number. The meme number. It's the sex number, everybody. Um, you can find... You know, actually, let's just get rid of that. This is distracting. This... There. Now we are... Oh, what was that? Hold on a second. Was that actually a good one? Love story, furry shades of gay? No, it is not. Okay. That's also cracked. Don't steal from independent people. Come on now. Alrighty. Uh... If I wanted to go out into the larger universe, then I've got this. Book series recommendation for science fiction must read. If I respond, if I hit a fucking reply... Good heavens, I'm sorry. If I hit a reply here, don't mean to curse, my bad. If I hit a reply here, I will be in front of 11,500 people. Right here. In fact, let's just take a look at them. See what this is. Viral kindness in the southern... No, I don't even care about this. So this right here. So if I do this, 
and I talk about my book or I tie it in or however, don't just spam, of course, but my reply will be visible to 11,400 people. Must read Painted Black, Cold Blooded 12. Ooh, spooky. Doesn't matter. Um, and you can just go through, and in fact, we can sort by reach here. Like, half a million. I, I could engage with this guy and be in front of half a million people if it was valid. Romantic Suspense, RWA, free book. CEO ladies humble hu oh god oh oh that hurt me to see no stop sending me this anyway we we are going to ignore this this is spam and they should feel bad what is this is this the same thing there we go sexy pi wade parker well that's not it you know uh, what do we got here independent author network a novel of the ancient world so it's hit or miss but it allows you... Uh, I think a Wario is about 200 bucks, give or take. Um, it depends on, on the level. It depends on how much you want to do. Um, but I'm not saying you need to buy a Wario Etchy. I'm saying you, you need to look at social listening platforms. Because, and here's the key, I can look at my domain, see what I am ranking for, with my organic keywords, right? Here's where I'm ranking. Plug that into my social listening platform. And now suddenly I have people that would naturally be going to my website that I know because I'm tracking it here. And I can reach out and touch them. And I can reach out and talk to them. Would appreciate a writer's lift. So, I have a book next month, and Tamara Ferguson retweeted. So that means that Tamara Ferguson is most likely uh, going to ping people. So, maybe I ask her to retweet me, and she throws me in front of 151,000 people. Probably not. I'm probably too niche for that, but you're getting my point, though. It's exactly. This is the difference between cold calling versus finding hot leads. This is the difference between I am literally just spamming things out there versus, oh, okay... You know, I, I'm, I'm paying attention and I'm trying to talk to people that would make sense to me. Uh, one thing... I, I don't want personalized ads. Go away. Go away. So you'll see, um, I, have a steady <laughs> I have a steady stream of memes and then... Oh, it looks like it's mostly memes. Uh, I have a steady stream of memes and then every so often you will see... I, I have a story snippet, and then there's memes, and then there will be a story snippet, and then there's memes. And so the question is, of course, um, how are you able to do this without spending your entire life on it? And for that, you will need uh, what is called a social media scheduler. A social media scheduler is the way to go. Um, as you see here, and I've basically pulled out the last week of December. I think we go up to the 30th, don't we? Yeah. So I, I pull out the last week of December, and I really need to add more memes. I haven't done that in the past couple weeks. But I go in across Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Of course, not LinkedIn. I don't want anybody to know that I actually do this. Um, but I go through, and I schedule all of my memes for the month and I schedule them in advance it takes about an hour to do uh, and I have people on the server that are making memes like Shukaku is, is somebody that's making these pretty fancy memes for me um, and as you see on the weeks that I don't have memes scheduled I'm still dropping some story information as well uh, so there is never a there's never a, a, a week, really, where I'm not active on social media, and this allows me to stay relevant. Um, so I do not pay people to make memes for me. Um, what I do, and I think this is incredibly important, uh, and I'm going to go back to the website, and I'm going to go to the dank memes, 
Um, I have official art that I I give that like you know I'll make and then I'll, I'll hand out. There's fan art which I have not updated because it just slows the hell out of the website. But we'll get there eventually. Um, and then these shit posts are all out of date as well. But as you see, as my emojis sort of roll in, you might notice something as you look at them, other than the fact that they are all shit posts of the highest quality. Um, the entire point of... Okay, how do I put this? You'll notice these faces here, and then you'll look at my memes and you'll see the faces here. And you see the same faces. And it's like, wait a minute. People are just grabbing like this emoji right here. And then they're just throwing it on a picture here. And then they're giving it to me. The way you get this is not only having a good, good product, but the way you get this is by removing friction. In the Discord server, there are Dropbox links that I host to every single emote that I have ever made. Not only are the emotes for the people of the server to use, but as I even put in this media page, feel free to add these to your own server. These are free use. You may have them forever. Just don't claim that they're yours, but you may enjoy them as your own. Um, You've heard of the foolish and non-enforceable closed species. Uh, like, I think the people that are doing protogens or primogens have it as a closed species. That doesn't actually exist. Um, American copyright law uh, and, and trademark law is very black and white because Disney runs that joint. Um, and that you have many free use uh, areas of copyright and and trademark law um and that's the reason why you can have your own mickey mouse sona and disney doesn't just send the the burger king hit squads to your door to kill you um it's sort of the same principle here and i didn't mean to go on that little ramble but the long story short here is that you want to remove friction if you sit there and you say you can't play in my gated garden and these are all mine and no one else can do anything well two things will happen number one no one else will do anything nobody will touch your stuff nobody will 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 play in your sandbox because of the fear that you are going to make a big stink about it um, and then number two the people that are going to play in your sandbox are going to do so antagonistically so to speak they will do it and they will not care uh, they will do it and it will not be flattering to your intellectual property. They will do it and they might as well just make money off of it because screw you. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to reduce the friction. I am in constant contact with everybody on my Discord server. And by that I mean I make myself available to everybody on the Discord server. There is never a time where I'm over here like, no, don't talk to me or, or you know, get away or whatever, what not, what have you. If people have good ideas for emotes and emojis, I pay to have them made, and I pull it out of the Patreon dollars, and I do that. Um, and, and I make all of them available as downloadable links to anyone to do anything. If you come to me and say, Tiny, I want to draw this, but how can I make it happen? I will help you draw it. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, hold the pencil for you, but I'll tell you, you know, do you want to make it canonical? Do you just want to make something up? Go do what you want. Like, go have fun. If you want to write in my universe, I have a master reference document that helps you stay canonical, and I answer questions in the master reference document, and I will proofread your work, and I will actually server announce your own fan fiction chapters which I have done for multiple other writers that have come in and said, I like your universe, I want to do a short story, is that okay? Not only is it okay, but I encourage it. And when you cultivate that kind of culture, when you cultivate a culture of low friction, everybody can play, everyone can enjoy, you get 
people making memes. This is fan art. I didn't pay for it. The rest of these are memes. This is a this is an edit of Twitter. And 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 I'm not I am not paying a dime for it. I'm not doing anything for it. This expression right here, this happy expression, somebody just edited one of the server emotes and that's it. There's no I'm not doing anything. This, if this will run, this is somebody is just doing this. Like that's ridiculous. And they're they're doing the um the the 12 werewolves behind a Denny's but it's 14 Dorars and behind an Olive Garden, but we we won't talk about that because, you know, this is a this is a friendly friendly server chat. Um but all of these all of these are fans that just want to see themselves on Twitter, on Pinterest, on Facebook, on on wherever. And so they make what they consider a low effort shit post, but I think is just wonderful. They make a shit post and then I take it and I throw it out there. Like here's another one. He's doing and that's an among us reference. There, boom, out. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like they want to see themselves get that public head pat. They become part of the culture. You are absolutely right. And because I am wanting them to, there's zero friction for them to. Randomly, every couple of days, I'll get a meme that is just made, and they will at me, and I will say, phenomenal, next time I load up the meme cannon, it's going in. And I give them a special role on the server, and I thank them publicly, and I head pat them, and, and that's how it happens. That's how I generate content. Because if you're not doing this, if you're not doing this, then you're gonna have to be doing this. It's gonna have to be content that is is of your own stuff, and then you're going to have to go out there and and be active and like retweet things. Where's something that I retweeted? That's not it. Did I retweet anything recently? I don't know. Um, you're gonna have to go out there and you're gonna have to to be active. Like here's another here's another fan art, and that's just it. See, like this is this is this is just BS fan art here. Um, and it's just, it's so much easier if you engage people and allow them to work with you and to enjoy the universe that you're created and be a part of it. If not, it all falls on you, and if it all falls on you, then you, you got to work hard on it. Um, yeah, target audience is those who want to empower autistic people, and that's good. Uh, neurodivergence as well is, is very good. Build a sense of community. So one of the things that might help, and this is not necessarily money and, and like building and making a business out of it. This is more just sort of building the community itself. You may want to um, have a culture guideline and a culture code. Um, there is a phenomenal book actually called The Culture Code, and I don't remember who it is by, um, but he breaks down basically what makes good cultures good cultures, how you can build a culture of intent and how you can build the type of culture you want. If you do decide to join the small discord, and this is not a, this is not a plug, this is just a fact. If you do decide to join the small discord, you are dropped into a welcome room and the welcome room has a list of rules. There are eight. But before that, it has five culture guidelines. And you have to agree to both of them. And the culture guidelines are basically the, the heart of the community. It's the spirit of the law, maybe not the letter. And it fills in the blanks, but it very much sets the tone for everything else. It is worth reading the book if you want to build a culture around your work. If you want the culture to self-build, do not read the book. Don't waste your time with it. If you want to build the culture yourself, read the book, take notes, and do it with intent. That's, that's all I can really say about that. That's what I would recommend. Um, 
what else? I guess since we have 15 minutes and I, and I sort of covered some of the major points, I've basically been rambling. Um, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have anything that they want to talk about? And if you do just want to talk about the market in general, I'd be more than happy to discuss that, but just note that I am still in the process of getting my SIE 6 and 7. I cannot talk about the Canadian financial system in any way, shape, or form. I am not a tax advisor. Um, starting from zero. That's the hardest. <laughs> um, I'm not going to lie. Starting from zero is, is the hardest what you need to do if you are starting from zero is you do not create your work and then try to force a community around it. You go to an existing community. So if, if we were to uh, reddit.com and let's see if it will let me in. It's like my most recent posts. We'll just go here. It don't matter. Eh. Oh no, my subscription. Uh, so we go here. So I started on the HFY subreddit. All that to get to here. Um, I started on the Humanity Fuck Yeah subreddit. Again, excuse the language, but it's right there. So, whatever. Um, and... I built my initial market, I built my initial fan base on this subreddit that already has 159,000 people. Now is it 50 million people and I'm going to be the next JK Rowling and blah 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 and then I'll be outed as a transphobe and just you know have this great fall from grace? No. Also because I'm not transphobic. But you know, it, it's only 150,000 people if even t like roughly 10% initially read my work and maybe half of them have stuck around like I have about an eight to nine thousand person readership base um, but this is where people already are because of the nature of the platform of it being reddit they are open to reading fan works and because they are open to reading fan works and because I am in the right community, when I step forward and say, I have a science fiction story about humans being awesome set in the near to far future, I have a baked in audience. If you can't find a subreddit that's like this, you may want to do Royal Road. Um, and so if you look at Royal Road, and let's just go to, is it my profile or my fictions? So we go to my fictions here. Um, as you can see, a thousand followers. 4.5, 4.6 rating, that's always nice. Total page views, we are almost at a half million. Average views per chapter, 5,000. You can then start branching out, or you can start here and go around. I mean, it depends. I only did this after I'd been writing on, on Reddit for six to eight months. But the high level is that you want to go where the people are. Royal Road is a nice one. Uh, Archive of Our Own is another one. Fan-created, non-profit, non-commercial archive. This would be a nice place for you to throw. I don't know why it's still in beta. It's been around for 15 years. Um, this is where you want to go. You never make something and then assume people will come. Build it and they will come is the biggest lie ever told. You don't ever do that. No one ever does that. Don't do it. What you do is, is you find some place that has something, has some intersection to your story. Start there. Build an audience. You know, I had been posting on HFY for over a year before I went to Royal Road. And then because of that, there are some people who have uh, comments here, not only reviews, I, I do thank all of these people. Um, but I get some people that are just straight up like, hey, uh, I saw this on Reddit, I'm so glad it's here, I like reading it here better. And you know, this guy's over here like just straight up like, I've lost sleep, I can't, I can't stop reading it. And that's, that's always a phenomenal uh, thing. But that's where you get your audience. Now, there's something called the audience effect, and there's a multiplier effect. Um, 
where basically once you have a small audience you can use that to build into a bigger one which is sort of what I'm in the process of doing now but right now everything is still natural what if there isn't something close enough to what you are trying to do what are you trying to do <laughs> that would be my initial and immediate question because you are telling me out of the seven and a half billion people on this planet half of them have internet so out of the 3.2 no, 3.75 billion people that have internet there is not one of them that is anywhere close to what you are trying to do if that is the case either a you are a madman or b you have an idea that will never gain any traction there always is something that is close enough to what you are trying to do always always now it might take you a little bit and sorry I was a little drink break it might take you a little bit of time to uh, find them I'm not going to pretend that they're just going to be out there but yeah okay like, 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 let's look at let's look at they are small real quick um, let's look at they are small not short cop but short cops there too so I had to find people that like to read so there is a giant giant audience people who like to read and then we shrink that down to people who like to read science fiction okay so people who like to read to people who like to read science fiction to people who like to read furry science fiction for lack of a better term so people like to read people like to read science fiction people like to read furry science fiction people who like to read comedic furry science fiction okay so you see how i'm starting to slice this pie thinner and thinner and thinner <clears throat> so people who like to read uh comedic furry science fiction people who like to read comedic furry science fiction uh that's serialized that's not just one big novel that's released weekly so now i'm in an even smaller pie uh people who like to read serialized weekly furry science fiction or people like to read serialized weekly comedic furry science fiction you, you, you get what i'm saying like you see how many adjectives there are <laughs> in front of my target audience and i have gone from five billion people on the planet down to maybe 20 million on the entire planet but if i just capture a tenth of that if i get two million readers across the entire globe I am on the New York Times bestseller list and I'm getting a movie deal and and Kanye and I are rapping in the studio and and I have a falling out with with I'm guessing a supermodel at some point somewhere because that's what happens right like you don't need to have don't try to swallow the ocean don't jump out there and say well if I can't swallow the ocean then what I have is too niche define what you're doing and go down as far as it does to make sense and then start looking for audiences in that bubble or in that bucket or however you want to in that corral in in that stable because we're horses you know what you're trying to do like let's let's go for star pony uh star pony is trying to build something for people who are autistic neurodivergent and their allies so now we've closed it uh, and it is writing if I remember correctly so they want to find uh, autistic neurodivergent and their allies who enjoy reading you know like like you, you see how that bubble shrinks but the target audience becomes more and more defined as you define your target audience you will find out where they live better and and then you can start targeting that and then you run into the fun part of, well, you've saturated your initial target market. Where are your other ones? Uh, basic financial advice applicable to all. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba and page to page mentality. Oh, God. All right. Um, I'm going to. Oh, this is such a good question. Uh, I have 10 minutes in practice. There's a 90 minute gap after me. So I'm going to talk for the entire 90 minutes. Hold on a minute. Catherine, I am going to talk for the whole 90 minutes. And I'm just going to make a menacing face, and that's it. Okay, cool. 
So apparently I have like another hour and a half of just rambling. So we're just going to ramble. It's going to be great. Okay. So now we're going to switch to sort of financial advisor mode here. So Prodigy. I want you to imagine wealth and wealth building because that is that is truly what you are asking it's not just saving but having an emergency fund being able to pounce on investments when you come across it not being afraid of money not being concerned about where your next you know living hand to mouth is because you are wealthy and have amassed and built wealth i want you to imagine wealth is a pyramid and i know pyramids are supposed to be four-sided but we're just we're just going to make ours three-sided so there are three sides. Um, I'll, I'll uh, cry. Let me just give my new. Okay. Um, so I want you to imagine that um, as a three-sided pyramid. So if we are looking down at the top of the pyramid, there are three sides to this this wealth triangle. The first side is your income from your job. The second side is the income from your investments. And the third side at the bottom is the... So, Combo Breaker, just as a side note, I, I was pinged by uh, Catherine that I can continue? Maybe? Uh, so, Combo, can you give me that, that yes or no real quick? Because I don't want to... I don't want to continue rambling if that's not actually the case. So, just real quick. Oh, God, we're everywhere. Uh, let's get rid of this window here. Boop, there we go. Um, so, can you give me the the heads up as to whether or not... Uh, combo, uh, if there's... Oh, they have stuff planned for the gap. Well, dang. Uh, I guess the question will just have to to live in in giant question mark. Um, Prodigy at, at a very high level, I guess. What I would recommend. Um, I mean, I could do a personal stream, or I could just talk, and you could continue the vendor advertisements if that's possible. Combo. I don't mind doing that. Uh, Discord stream, we could do a Discord... We could do a Discord chat, actually. Uh, where can we do that? Yeah, just let me know. I'm fine. So, um, at a super high level, Prodigy, um, automate everything. If you automate it, uh, you don't have a chance to screw it up. <laughs> it's, it's at an incredibly high level. Uh, if you automate your savings, if you automate your investings, that's where I would do. The three sides of your pyramid, if you're at a top down, looking down, and so it looks like a triangle. The first side on the left is going to be your job. The second side on the right is going to be your investments. And the third side at the bottom is going to be your side hustle, which is basically what we have spent all this time talking about today. Your goal is to expand the footprint of this triangle. You want this to be a large triangle. And it doesn't matter if it becomes an acute or an obtuse triangle. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, but what you want is, is you want to create what's called a virtuous cycle. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep talking until somebody cuts the mic. Um, so Combo Breaker, just let me know what's good. Um, what you want to do is, is you want to expand the footprint of this triangle. So, your job, right now, pays money into its investments, into your savings and all that other good stuff, and pays money into... Yeah, well, I mean, we can do Discord. Like, that's kind of the thing, is I'm just trying to see sort of who does what and where and, and what they want me to do, because I don't want to... Yeah, I don't, I don't want to um, sort of take away from anyone's i can go till seven okay nice thank you very much combo i appreciate it um <laughs> so right now your job is your job and let's just let's just be honest and i'm, I'm gonna make it easy i'm just gonna assume that you know you're making fifty thousand dollars well just whatever just because of math 
Um, but your job is your job and you are doing whatever it is that you are doing. Your investments may not exist, and I'm going to assume that they don't. Your investments are a wasteland, that side of the triangle doesn't exist, and you don't even have a side hustle. You're not doing Grubhub, you're not doing, uh, <laughs> you don't have an OnlyFans, um, you're not doing whatever, right? You, you are just where you are, and all you have is your job. So, the goal here is to create a virtuous cycle between the three sides of your triangle. You want money from your job to go into your investments and a side hustle. You want money from your investments to help pay for your side hustle and to help you become more skilled at your job. So for instance, if you were making $50,000 and you are in IT, it would be super nice if one of your investments could be sold and then pay for Six Sigma certification or to pay for an A, a, an a plus certification or Microsoft certification or Google cert or whatever it is and then suddenly you can go to either your boss or to a different company and instead of making 50 grand you're making 60 because now you have a certification and then you can take that extra 10 grand and pour it into your investments or pour it into your side hustle if we look at my triangle I am a financial planner um, and, and, and a financial advisor for my day job. Um, I have my investments, uh, 401k, a Roth IRA, I do have savings and I, I do have other things that I'm, I'm speculating in. And then at the bottom I have my writing, which is 800 bucks a month. Now it's 700, but whatever. Um, when I lost my job due to COVID, way back in the beginning of, of this year, and I started getting on unemployment. I still had my side hustle going on, so I was still able to make ends meet. And then my side hustle paid for my certifications to be life insurance licensed, to be annuities registered, to, to all that other stuff. My, my side hustle paid that. And then I was able to take my new licensing and go to another company and say, hey, you should hire me, and then they did. So now that I have a job, I'm taking the money from my job and I am pouring it into my side hustle and I'm doing Facebook ads and I'll be doing uh, Google ads and I'm, I'm paying for this and we're, and we're doing that. I have a visual novel coming out. Like I'm raising the visual, I'm raising the um, visibility of my side hustle. And what will that do? Well, maybe instead of being at $700 a month for the Patreon and 5,000 readers, if my visual novel becomes a, a little hit, if I'm able to do a journalist ladder, if my Facebook advertising takes off, maybe now I'm at $1,100 at my Patreon and 10,000 readers. Okay, well now that I have $1,100, you, you get what I'm saying? You create this virtuous cycle between the three sides of your triangle and that naturally will help you grow. If I had $1,100 a month coming in from my side business, well if I can pour $500 a month of that into stocks, bonds, CDs, mutual funds, and it pays me 5% a year. Okay, so at the end of the year, I've put six grand into investment vehicles that are paying me 5% of that. 5% of six grand, that would have been uh, $600, so that's 300 bucks. I'm getting 300 bucks a year. You know, what is that? 20 bucks a month? for free forever and I can take that 20 bucks a month and I can now pay for my my hosting of my website forever from that six grand of investments that I made so that's a good question Etchy. it all depends uh, my entire goal so what I do is is I try and get you to work optional as quick as possible so if my side hustle, and this is just true, so let's just pretend I become a, a, a Twitch streamer, e-thought, I'm selling my bath water, you know, all that other good stuff, and I'm making a I'm making million dollars a year from my quote-unquote side hustle. Your side hustle could either A, stay as a side hustle. I like working in the financial services sector so much, I might not ever quit. I might just keep doing that. Um, but if, if your side hustle becomes your main hustle, if your writing is able to pay for your bills, 
if your art is able to to support your lifestyle then you you basically take that part of the triangle it is now your day job and now you need another side hustle and your side hustle for your side hustle could be as simple as physical merchandise it could be as simple as I sell I sell the originals if I'm doing painting I sell the originals and that's my side hustle to my side hustle it could be that you know if if I'm doing um, music that my side hustle to my side hustle instead of like my actual albums and whatnot is that I go and I do royalty free music or I go and I partner on on different programs and if I do the entire musical score for this indie video game I don't want any money I want five percent of sales I want a five percent net profit and then I have seven or eight or ten video games that are using my soundtrack and they they pay me a royalty check every every month you know what I'm saying like there are tons of ways to do that but the goal is not necessarily to say I'm now my own boss your goal here is to build your triangle large enough that work becomes optional if my side hustle produces enough money monthly that I don't have to worry about my day job I am functionally retired if my investments provide enough passive income that I do not have to worry about making ends meet I am functionally retired that is the dream and that is the goal when people say they want to be wealthy when people say they want to be a millionaire or this or that or the other that's not actually what their fears are and that's not actually what their goal is their goal is instead I just want to not worry about money I just want to live comfortably I just want to be able to quit the job that is killing me and not have to worry about where rent is coming that's the footprint and that's the virtuous cycle that you want remember I said this is a pyramid so now you are now standing in the desert and you're now looking on the side view of the pyramid and there are three levels to the side view there is the base of the pyramid the foot there is the middle of the pyramid and then floating above the pyramid is this eye it's really weird don't understand it says e pluribus unum I, I don't know French doesn't matter so what are these three tiers the bottom most basic tier is defense 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 you need to play de no it's not Latin it's not Latin it's Japanese don't worry about it star pony um, it's a joke by the way, Star Pony, it is a joke. I am being silly. Don't worry. Um, you want to play defense before anything else. And I think this, this speaks to a little bit of what Prodigy was asking. And Prodigy, I don't know if you're still here. But if you are, thank you for starting this rambling. I do appreciate that. Um, the bottom of this pyramid is defense. So let me ask a question, and this is going to be a real question that I'm going to ask. Uh, and I know there are some people here that have some pretty fast fingers, so we will see. Um, but if I have $10,000 and I invest it into the stock market and I lose 10%, let's say I lose 10% in 2019, how much money do I have starting in 2020? If I have 10 grand and I lose 10% in 2019, how much money do I have starting 2020? Anybody? This is a real question. I want you all to do the math. 9,000, correct. If I have 9,000 and over 2020 I gain 10%, how much money do I have to start 2021? So if I have 9,000, I gain 10% over 2020, 
How much money do I have to start in 2021? That is correct. <clears throat> so you look at that and a loss is harder to recoup than a gain. Managing your downside risk, no prodigy, come on now. Um, no, no, Etchy, no, no, prodigy, no, no. CR is correct. If I have $10,000 and I lose 10%, I am at $9,000. If I am at $9,000 and I gain 10%, I am at $9,900. We're not talking about taxes. We're not talking about any of the fun stuff you can do there. That's that's not the point. The point is is that a 10% loss and a 10% gain does not make you equal. A 10% loss means you need to have a 12.5% gain in order to be even. So what do we do? We need to limit our downside risk. This is done through insurance. This is done through a uh, safety net which is the people say have three to six months of your income saved up in cash that is inc that's an incredible amount of money that you're not doing anything with um 80 percent 80 to 85 percent of most emergencies that an american and again can't talk about the canadians or anywhere else but that an american will face tap out at about twenty five hundred dollars so if you have $3,000 saved in cash, liquid form, that you can just use on a card if something happens, you will cover a majority of problems. Um, to give you an example, uh, in the past week, I have been hit by a car, my roof sprung a leak, the sump pump in my basement broke. So uh, my deductible for my car insurance is $500 and to fix the sump pump was $750. So I pulled it out of my $3,000 emergency, and, and, and yeah, I know, um, 2021 is just really, so far, not the greatest. Uh, I'm going in for an MRI uh, Monday. Um, I have some lasting nerve pain, uh, so it's a little bit unfortunate, but it's nothing that everybody's too concerned about. Um, but I'm, I'm okay. Like, long story short, I am okay. I mean, for Pete's sake, I'm doing, I'm doing a panel. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in that much dire straits. Um, but, but that was a $1,150 hit that I just needed to take. I have $3,000 in cash. Hit done. Um, play defense. No, it's, it's not a joke. No, I mean, like, I legitimately... Uh, I got hit by a car. Hold on a minute. Let me <laughs> let me see if I can just. I'll just. We'll just. We'll just make. Uh, no, nah, I won't post pictures. You don't need to see that. Um, but I can post pictures. Um, and it's just like, oh, I got rear-ended. Anyway, long story short, um, yeah, I, I stopped at a construction zone, and the guy behind me decided not to stop and use me to break. So that's cool. Um, Long story short, though, we have good car insurance. Um, oh, do I? Do I have? I don't know. You're not saying Pixar didn't happen, but you are saying Pixar didn't happen, huh? All right, all right, all right. You nerd. The fans. It is. It is like falling down. Where are we? Boop, 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 boop. I think I passed the server. Yeah, I did. Boop. Boop. And where are we? We are in... Uh, flank stage. And we are here. And then we are just going to... So I will post the other... Well, no, no. Actually, I'll just, I'll just post mine. Uh, so the dude... Uh, <laughs> he slammed into me. Uh, and what's really interesting, like fascinating, is that he just basically used my tire uh, to brake. Just super, super weird. Uh, so that'll be uploading very soon, and we'll just go forward from there. Um, but yeah, so uh, wow, it's taking a long time to load. Come on, do it, do it. There we go. Is that there? We're good? 
Boom. A. So, uh, so yeah, so he just literally uh, slammed into my tire. Super weird. Um, and there's another one coming out where, oh, man, it's, it's like he was in a little Volvo and just straight up, he didn't see me, even though it was a quarter mile straight away behind me. And he saw me at the last second and tried to swerve around me and just didn't clear the bumper. Um, yeah, he just completely, like my spring is like five feet behind me. Um, he just ripped it apart. It's incredible. Uh, so if there's any of you, yeah, right? Um, so long story short, yeah, in the last week I got hit by a car, my roof sprung a leak, and my sump pump broke. So that was $7,500, or no, $7,500, uh, $1,700. No, eleven $1 hundred and seventy dollars that needed to be, you know, pulled out. So anyway, uh, picks have been provided. Now nobody, nobody can say, nobody can say nothing. Um, anyway, yeah, right. Uh, but you, you, you got to. So I had, um, I have great car insurance. I use State Farm. And we have uninsured motorists, and we have medical cost coverage, and we have rental car coverage. And does it cost a little bit more? Yes. I mean, but I, I have my house with State Farm, too, So because we bundle it, it's cheaper. They're taking care of everything. So I am out a total of $500 for my car. State Farm has already coughed up two grand. They might be coughing up another three grand to fix it. And that's not counting my medical bills, and that's not counting the cost for the rental car that is now in its second week and i'm not paying for it you know i got my 500 dollars deductible and that's it um my my leak in my roof is covered by homeowners insurance so that was taken care of and it was covered by the warranty that i bought for the guys that came in and did the house the plumbing thing well yeah i had to eat that one but that was basically part of the emergency fund you have to play defense if you are renting, get renter's insurance. I don't care that you're in an apartment. It's $15 a month. If somebody kicks down your door and takes all your crap, what do you do? You just don't have anything anymore. If you have renter's insurance, you at least get some of that back, if not all of it. Have car insurance. Yeah, I know. It's a pain, and there's all these extra little things, and it's 20 bucks here and 50 bucks there and all that other good stuff. Get it. I don't get involved in car accidents every year. But when I do, I mean, look, I mean, shit, I'm going in for an MRI on Monday. <clears throat> Three hour one, too. So, like, there, it's, it's, but I'm covered. I'm covered for $20,000 of medical expenses. Like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, that's phenomenal. Um, have life insurance. And I know this is silly, and, and it's like, well, Tiny, why would I do that? I've got 1.1 on me. And the reason why I have 1.1, yeah, capitalism hates me, right? Um, the reason why I have 1.1 is because I've got a quarter million dollars left to pay down my house. Uh, I have $100,000 of student loan debt, so that's $325,000. Um, and then I have my elderly mother that I want to take care of, so the other roughly $700,000 would be for her for the remaining 20 years of her life to pay for any medical expenses, to pay for day-to-day -day bills, and to allow her to have a little bit of luxury. I have 1.1 on myself. If I end up getting married, if I end up having kids, or adopting them, or stealing them from playgrounds, I don't know how it's going to happen, um, you know, then I would be getting more. Because I would have to be paying for their colleges, I'd be paying for my significant other's care, and all that other good stuff. Have life insurance. And by the way, uh, and this is at least for the United States, I can't really speak for anywhere else, but life insurance does have living benefits. If you develop a chronic issue, you can accelerate, nine, at least for my company, you can accelerate 90% of your benefits as tax-free cash money to do whatever you want to with it. So if you've got a half million dollars sitting in a term insurance policy, you can accelerate 450 grand of that if you develop cancer or if you develop kidney failure or any of that other stuff. So... There's a bunch of stuff that you can do. Have have insurance. Um, you know, it's you play defense before you play offense. Offense always looks sexy because it is. 
offense is where your bank account gets a bunch of numbers in it offense is where you get that fancy car you get the sunglasses you get to make this face all day long that is offense you don't play offense until you play defense because with simple math we have proven that a hit to your bottom line does more damage than a gain you have to have outsized gains to make up for normal hits if you take a 10 percent hit you need a 12 and a half percent you know but you get my point star pony maybe it's not college maybe it is trade school maybe it is investing in small business i would rather my child have a hundred thousand dollars in cash to do whatever they want to with it than not have anything it i mean it does not matter it is what it is um playing defense have a will there are three things that you need i don't care how old you are you need a will you need a medical directive and you need a power of attorney. You know, you're saying I've only heard one out of the three of those. A will is stops you from, at least in the United States, again, not speaking about Canada, and again, I'm also not a tax attorney, so blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, yeah, he probably does. A will stops your, your estate from going to probate court probate court at least in the united states is basically a 10 to 20 percent cut of anything and everything that you have that is of value they will liquidate it they will turn it into a slush fund and then they will pay it out based upon the law of the state that you exist in so it is a punitive and i do use the word punitive there purposely it is a punitive measure because you were not bothered to spend a hundred dollars to ask a lawyer to build a will for you you couldn't be bothered to put your own affairs into order and you're forcing the state to do so and because you're forcing the state to do that the state is going to charge you an arm and a leg it is what it is you need a will you need a medical directive and i know you're probably asking yourself what is a medical directive and why do i need one Let's say that accident was a lot worse. Let's say instead of behind me, he T-boned me, and instead of me just having a little bit of nerve pain, I'm in a medically induced coma, which could have happened. So a medical directive basically legally states what my wishes are if I am incapacitated. If I am unconscious, if I am in a coma, either medically or just physically, if I am brain dead, if something has happened to me and I am incapacitated physically, a medical directive is something that doctors and lawyers and the state and my family can look at and say these are Tiny's wishes for care. So for instance, in my medical directive, I say yes, give me transfusions of blood. Yes, d you know, give me... Um, give me organ transplants um yes put me on life uh, not life alert put me on uh the icu you know breathing machines um if i am brain dead let me live for another six months and then pull the plug because if if i'm not back after six months then i'm not coming back pull the plug let me go it it is something that lets everyone know where you stand and what you want to do and it leaves no confusion. Oh my God, am I still here? Yes, I am, okay. Um, it leaves no confusion for you or anyone around you. A power of attorney is somewhat along those lines. It allows someone you trust under certain triggered circumstances to act as you legally. That doesn't mean that they can commit a crime and say, it wasn't me, it was... Oh, I'm going to pick on a mod here. It wasn't me, it was Combo Breaker all along. See, I have his power of attorney. Ha <laughs> ha. That's not, that's not how that works. Um, what it basically says is, is, like, if I am incapacitated, which is what I have, is if I'm medically incapacitated, whoever has my power of attorney is legally allowed to pay my bills. They are legally allowed to settle debts. They are legally allowed to pay things off and, and you know, this, that, and the other. Um... You need all three. It is part of playing defense. 
it stops you it stops your downside risk so stopping your downside risk is 99% of the way to build wealth yes you expand your triangle but it's not what you make it's what you keep you can make a million dollars a year and if you if you're spending nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars a year servicing debt servicing a lifestyle that you can't sustain playing you know keep up with the Joneses then you're not wealthy you're going to die poor you have a dollar a year to spend doing anything else it's not worth it if you are making fifty thousand dollars a year but your expenses are only twenty thousand dollars and you have thirty grand a year to play with you are going to be retired within a decade real talk yes you will like there's a bunch of stuff you can do it's not what you make it's what you keep it's not what you pay it's what you get for what you pay it's not about how much you can make it's about lowering that downside risk play defense first so hopefully I've hammered that into your head because now we can talk about offense and offense is fun offense is a lot of fun because it's all about making a lot of money it's about that you know that 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 you know stonks go up it's about the Bitcoin and all that other good stuff um, there's no reason not to to start a side hustle uh, and that's kind of the thing yes it's more viable to work on the personal income side yes you will be making your larger gains that way but a side hustle could be that you work for DoorDash a side hustle could be you drive for Uber um, a side hustle could be anything it's just bringing in additional money when you are not at your normal job so don't think of side hustle as just writing or art or, or whatever a side hustle can be literally anything but it is it is something that you yourself manage and can grow that's the most important part um, Let's talk about offense. Well, first, let me just let's let's first just see who's even here, because it says I'm I'm only streaming for 19 viewers. There are only 19 people here. I know Etchy's here. Uh, I know Spot's probably here. Star Pony's here. Anybody else here? Cr is good. Biggest Bugus, are you here? Where did the uh, Prodigy go? All right, Spot's here. Cr's here. All right, we good good. Um, so here's the second part. Here's the fun part. Here's how you make money. Here's how stonks only go up. So, Canada has its equivalents. I cannot speak to the Canadian equivalents, but just know that they exist. That being said, hello, King Boy Bill. Uh, you're a bot and you don't count. You're not a real person. So, um,. If you are in the United States, there are three buckets by which you can be taxed. The first bucket is double taxation, the, the second bucket is single taxation, and the third bucket is never taxed. Twitch has a 40 second delay, good lord. Um, that's ridiculous, okay, dying. Um, I, I hope not. I'm still here. I'm still going to run. Oh, there was a network error. Ooh. Chad is having issues at the moment. All right. It looks like a I'm network back. error. Ooh. Okay. I'm back. I refreshed. I think we're good. Uh, just another check. Uh, here. We're good. Uh... All right, now I'm just gonna keep rambling. I won't keep rambling, and nobody can stop me. Um, so there are three buckets by which you can put your income in. There is uh, the double and triple taxation bucket. There is a single tra tax bucket, and there is a never tax bucket. If you have a private investment account, you are on Robinhood, you are on Webull, you have a TD Ameritrade. You are in the second and or the double and triple taxation bucket, and I'm sorry, but that's just the case. That bucket should be the last bucket that you put your money in, and it should be the last bucket that you work on. That bucket also includes business income. 
Uh, my Patreon is double and triple taxed. Um, no, there's no tax fraud here. Um, that would definitely be a felony, and I do not advocate tax fraud. Let me just, on the record, pay your taxes. Pay your taxes. Um, so, if you have a normal investment account, now follow me here, your income is taxed before it goes into your bank account. You then take your already single taxed money and you put it in an investment account. If your investment grows and you sell it, you are taxed again. If your investment pays you dividends, you are taxed on your dividends. And then if you sell the underlying investment, you are taxed on that. If you take your dividends and reinvest them into the investment, you are not only still taxed on the dividend, but you are then taxed when you sell it again. You are in a double, triple taxation bucket. That is just the name of the game. That is the fact. So, single taxation. If you have heard of a 401k, this is a single taxation bucket. And again, Canada has its own version of this. And, and check with, if you are employed, check with your employer as to whether or not they offer a 401k. Odds are, uh, they do. Uh, Van, Van Hoover flank stage, is that, what is that? Do I need to click it? I'm going to click it. Let's see what happens. Is that me? <gasps> There's me. All right. Cool. Comfy, comfy. Uh, I'm going to close it now because I don't really know what's going on. Um... A 401k takes money out of your paycheck before you are taxed. So if you make $50,000 a year and you have 10% of your money going to a 401k, five grand a year will go out into a 401k account in your name and the government will tax you as if you made $45,000 a year. So it is a pre-tax investment account. When you turn ripe old age, 70 is when minimum required distributions happen, but if you retire at 65 or retire at 60, whatever it might be, um, when you retire, that money is then taxed. So let's just use a big number here. Let's say a million dollars. You work for 30, 40 years, you have a million dollars in a 401k. When you retire, that money is taxed as you pull it out. So you don't have a million dollars in your 401k. Functionally, you have about 600 grand. About 40% is gonna be eaten by taxes because the IRS will always get theirs, always. That is the single tax bucket. If you have a, yeah, multi-taxing, there you go. I, I like that. Um, so you have your multi-tax bucket, which is your, your, your individual investments, and you're doing that. If you have a business, that's multi-tax. If you invest in real estate, that's multi-tax. Your single tax bucket is 401k, for example. So you're getting your money pulled out. It's lowering your overall tax. You're, you're saving for the future. Your never tax bucket, which I like to put all of my money in the never tax bucket for all intents and purposes. Why, who's pinging me? Who are you? Uh, Angela Q's Wed League. I, f who are you? Um, in the never tax bucket is something called a Roth IRA. R-O-T-H IRA, Canada has their own version. And basically what it is, is, is you take, your, your income is taxed, your $50,000 is taxed, and so now you've got forty grand left over, or 35000 give or take. You're, you have that much money to live off of. You take some of that money and you put it in a Roth IRA. It grows tax-free because it was already taxed. And when you retire, you pull it out tax-free because it was already taxed. So the difference between a 401k and a Roth IRA, if you have a million dollars in each, is that in a million dollars in a 401k is actually 600 grand. A million dollars in a 
Roth IRA is a million dollars. You can do whatever you want to with it, and it's, it's your money. But you have limits on all of these. For a 401k, your limit is something like $20,000. For a Roth IRA, your limit is $6,000. Because, again, the IRS wants to make money. They don't want you just to have put everything in a tax-advantaged account, and then that's that. I would, if I was anyone here, and we're talking about the accumulation phase, and we are just starting out, and all I have is my normal job, and I don't have a side business, and all that other good stuff, first thing I would do is just, of course, $3,000 into a savings account, just as an emergency buffer, just to save me if something bad happens. Second thing I would do is if I have a 401k, I would go up to my employer's match because I am doubling my money. So I'd go up to my employer's match and then I would take as much money as I could, as long as I'm making under 180,000 US dollars a year, I can put six grand into a Roth IRA. I would put six grand into a Roth IRA. That would be my number one way to save and accumulate wealth for retirement. The rest of the money I can then play around with. I can find little things to invest in. I can do what not, what have you. I mean, I my new personal addiction is investing in magic cards and in uh, flesh and blood cards as well. So I'm doing a little bit of collectible speculating, but but that's all play money. The lion's share of my retirement money is in a 401k and in my Roth IRA. So can I have multiple IRAs? Uh, you can manage your own IRA uh, and you can have multiple IRAs. The limit is the same across all of them. So you can have 28 IRAs and put $1,000 in each of them, and then you've hit your $28,000 limit. You can have one IRA and put 28 grand into it, and that's your 401k. You can have 28,000 IRAs and, and do that. So now we're starting to get into a lot, of, a lot of really, really, really deep questions. If you are self-directing your IRA, yes, you can use it to buy property. Uh, let me just double check that. Uh, because I think the caveat there is is that it cannot be the property you live in. Yes, you can hold real estate in your IRA. You have to self-direct it. And any property you buy has to be strictly for investment purposes. Neither you nor anyone you're related to by blood or by marriage can use it. So if you want to take your IRA and buy a condominium in Florida and you will never use it and it's purely for investment, then yes, you can do that but you can't use an IRA as a down payment for your own house. The, what the hell? Who are you? Why are you calling me? No. No. No, I'm not answering that phone call. All right, uh, look at that. I'm talking about, I'm talking about dodging taxes and then immediately I start getting phone calls from weird numbers. Um, interrodasting. Uh, Long story short, um, Roth IRA, 401k, it's free real estate. It's free money. Do that. You, when, when we run into the problem, yeah, right, the IRS would like to know my location. Um, when we run into the problem of tiny, I want to invest in houses, or I want to do this, or I want to do short selling, or all that other good stuff, you should have expanded your wealth triangle large enough that you have that free play money. You should not be sitting here making $20,000, $30,000 a year saying, I want to short Tesla, or I want to, you know, I want to, I want to play stonks on Wall Street bets. If you're making, you know, if you're making under $50,000 a year, again, limit your downside risk limit your taxes save that money uh, you want to put it in a Roth you want to put it in a 401k you want to put it in some investments that make sense to you and your risk tolerance um, 
that would be the way I would go and what I would do. If you are breaking 70000 and up and your debt is under control, then yeah, then we can start talking about, okay, I want to be in index funds and I want to be in individual stocks that are paying dividends and I can sit down and I can, I can actually dump 10 grand a year into dividend stocks knowing that you're only going to be getting 3 to 5% of that money back as cash. Now, dividend stocks are not going to pay for your, your lifestyle until you have a lot of money in them and you've waited a long time. You, know, you put 10 grand in and you're getting paid 5% a year in cash. Now, yeah, you're, you're being paid $500 a year. That's nice, but that's, that's not going to cover everything. And then you also have to understand that inflation is, is roughly 2% a year. So if your money is not making 2% a year, year over year, you're losing money. Um, savings accounts are nice, but I don't put a shit ton of money in savings accounts, forgive my French. Um, I don't put a lot of money in my savings accounts because inflation is between 1% to 3% a year. I shorthand it to 2% a year. Savings accounts pay, what, 0.35% maybe? If it's a high-paying savings account, maybe closer to 1%. If they're super duper nice, my money is worth less money year over year that's kept in a savings account. But again, that's the reason why I have three percent in a, uh, or sorry, why I have three grand in a savings account, and then the rest of my money is in some form of investment. I, I can still liquidate the investments, but I'm not. I'm not over here doing this. Well, Etchy, um, your entry level job, which means you're getting paid probably, and I'm just going to make some broad, broad. So, you know, broad assumptions here between fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars a year. Um, even if you're tapping out at like, oh, I'm getting paid twenty bucks an hour, that's still like thirty thousand dollars a year. Um, so, I would. So you're working an entry-level job while you work on your music. I would definitely have your music as Plan B. So don't don't ignore your music, but invest in your main job invest in your career I have been working uh, in technology and technology sales for 13 years and now I have moved to finance I mean I did some work in finance and bank and consulting for two years and now I'm I'm in in straight finance and financial services um, I can command a salary if I need to. If my financial services job does not work out, if in a year or so I'm barely making ends meet and I need to go back into the tech field, I can do so and I can do so at I can do so at a salary that I can live comfortably on. That is always your plan B. Like you you need again, limit your downside risk. Uh, Etchy, I don't know what your entry level job is, but if you can double your pay in a year by getting certifications, by moving up the ladder, by maybe changing jobs and working for a different company after you've been there for a little while, um, that is going to get you further along the line to being able to make your music popular. What I mean by that is, is, is that if you are, I mean, let's let's say you're making fifty grand. Okay, so you go to a managerial position. I'm assuming you're working retail. Managerial position will probably be around forty-five to forty-seven five. You'll probably tap out at fifty-five to sixty. So let's just say you you go from twenty-two thousand where you are now, twenty-five thousand to forty grand, just forty grand flat. You have doubled your pay. With that doubled pay, your, your outflow has not doubled. If you are able to stop lifestyle creep, because now that you have all this money, you can go do all this stuff. If you can stop lifestyle creep and stay at your, at your same level of living, but double your pay, now suddenly, all right, let's just, let's just be honest here. Uh, let's just assume you make $45,000. You're not putting anything to a 401k. You're not doing anything else that I'm talking to you about. And you just pay flat taxes, like what a fucking probably 15%, give or take. So your probably take home is 
37,000. I'm going to probably shave off another two just to be fair. So 35,000. And again, I am not a tax professional. I am making all of this up. Do not the, get a tax professional. Um, but let's say you're making 35,000 and your outflows are still at 15 grand. So since you've doubled your pay and you, you still outflows are still at 15 grand, you have another 15, no, you have another $20,000 to do something with. You could spend a thousand dollars a month on Facebook ads for your music as opposed to just having a SoundCloud and hoping that people find you. You can, you want your day job to be able to pay for that side business. You want your day job to be able to accelerate it. Small is just now, like they are small, is just now going to be getting marketing and advertising. And I am dropping, I'm going to try and drop at least $300 a month on Facebook ads just for they are small. And if that doubles and triples and quadruples my readership base and suddenly my, my Patreon goes from 800 bucks to two grand a month, well, hot diggity damn. Like, but, but it's, I couldn't do that unless I was making enough money in my day job. Your goal should always be to become a professional in whatever industry you are in. You want to be a highly paid, high trained professional. Invest in yourself make the money, and then use that as the foundation for your virtuous cycle. Because the long story short, and I know I'll get to you, Prodigy, in just a second, but the long story short is, is that the investment side of your triangle is the slowest side. The day job side is, is every day. The side hustle side is every day. For me, it's every month. I get a paycheck every month. For my side hustle, I get a paycheck every other week for my day job, okay? Fast, fast, fast. The investment side of your triangle is measured in decades, tens and dozens of years. So if somebody comes up to you and says, hey, you know what, if you take, I can take that $10,000 and turn it into 50 grand in six months, they're lying to you. Or they want you to sell cocaine. It's one of the two, really, but either way, I wouldn't do it. The investment side is slow, but it is permanent. The day job is where you're going to make the bulk of your money to start the virtuous cycle. Your side business down at the bottom is going to accelerate it. But the investment side is sort of like that, that long pillar, that wall. It is that tried and true amount. I have amassed not a significant amount of wealth, actually. If I'm being brutally honest, especially if, if we take as much debt as I have based on my assets, I'm, I'm only up by you know ten or twenty thousand dollars. But I have a 401k, and I have a Roth IRA, and I I deposit money regularly into both of them. And over decades, I have probably another thirty years of work. Over the next thirty years they are going to turn into very large accounts so that I can live off of them for at least 20 or 30 years, if not indefinitely, which is the goal. That's nice. That's the third side of the triangle. That's for future tiny. The other two sides are for me right now. Star Pony asks, uh, so Etchy, I hope that answers your question at least. Uh, Star Pony asks, what would I need to do to take advantage of hidden tax loopholes? That is an incredibly broad question. Uh, firstly, and again, I am not a tax advisor. I am not a CPA. I failed accounting. Don't, do not, if you, if you have tax questions, you need to partner with a tax advisor. Because the tax loopholes quote unquote that I know of are completely dependent on my situation. So for instance, I have student loan debt. I can write off the interest I pay in student loan debt from my taxes. If you do not have student loan debt, well then that doesn't matter to you. And even then that's not really a hidden tax loophole. It's just, it's a deduction. It's almost a standard deduction on your taxes. Um, 
it all depends on the state that you're in. State taxes are different, man. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing or how you do that. Um, but but it is what it is. Ooh, Catherine's only giving me ten more minutes. All right, that's fine. Um, pretty high level stuff starting from the bottom is considerably harder for obvious reasons. If you can't currently rely on all of the quote unquote compound interest, where do people find the grit to stop and prevent lifestyle creep? Um, Prodigy, I'm just going to be brutally honest with you. Automate it. Uh, you automate it. If if you find that you are making a lot more money than you used to, um, and you don't want that lifestyle creep to hit you, I view, like, I'll put it this way, I do have a private investment account, like, where I, I, I have bonds, and I have mutual funds, and I have individual stocks, and all that good stuff. Every paycheck, I have a certain amount of money that is immediately taken from it. And wouldn't you know it, that certain amount of money is exactly how much more money I make at this new job from my previous job. And it goes into an investment account. You could do the same thing for your 401k. You can do the same thing for your savings. You can do the same thing for investing into a Roth IRA. Or if you want to, physical gold or Bitcoin or whatever, whatever does it for you. Automate it so at the end of the day, you count it as another bill. Like... My cell phone bill is my cell phone bill. I'm not over here saying like, oh man, I, I can't wait to overpay on my cell phone bill. I just view it as a bill and that's it. If you view an automatic deposit of your money into a 401k as another bill, or an automatic deposit of money into a Roth IRA as a bill. Like remember, it's a six grand limit if you're making under, I think, a buck fifty a year or a buck eighty a year. So it's a six grand limit. That's five hundred dollars a month. If you're getting paid uh, every other week, you know, that's a $250 bill a week, or every other week. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, that can eat a significant amount of your quote-unquote new money, and it's going to future you, and you can't touch it right now. You know, that would be what I would do, is... If it is automatic, if it is out of my control, nine times out of ten, you won't fight it. So the reason why people don't fight a lot of things is because they just view it as out of their control or that's just the way things are and then that's how it is. So if you want to stop lifestyle creep, make it automatic. You know, if you do have outstanding student loan debt, make it so that you automatically overpay on it. So every paycheck, there is another $80 draft from your bank account and it pays down your, your Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loan or whatever it is and then at the end of every month you pay your normal amount you know if you have a house same thing if you have a car same thing that kind of stuff will not only stop lifestyle creep but it will accelerate you getting out of debt um and that's probably i guess we'll leave it there because again i think i've got like seven minutes left i know it's where i'll leave it for this question um getting out of debt is going to be one of the best things you can do for yourself because uh, debt is not leverage. Uh, there is a difference between the two. Debt hurts you. So if you think about it, not only is a percentage loss harder to recoup, um, but you are being dinged a significant percentage loss on any debt you have outstanding, and you're also losing that money as opportunity cost from any future loans. So if I have a $10,000 loan that's at 5% APR, not only am I bleeding 5% a year on that 10 grand, which is not a small amount of money, but then if I could have put that money into an account that would have made me 2 or 3%, well, it turns out that loan is actually costing me 7% on my money. If my investments average 5% a year, and I, I have a loan that is charging me 5%, every dollar that I'm spending on that loan is a cost of 10%. 10 cents out of every dollar is what I'm losing when I'm paying down a 5% loan. Like, that would be how I would get out of lifestyle creep. That's how I would do it. And eventually, when, when you start having more money than you know what to do with, like when you start looking at your bank account and you've got like five figures in it and you're like, well, what the heck? What the hell am I doing with it? Then you can start living a little bit better. You can start living La Vida Loca. You know, if your Roth IRA is fully funded and you've got a good 401k going and your side business is going well and you've put money away in investments and you've paid off your debt, at that point you really are very wealthy. And yes, you can go. And because you've been such a good steward of your own funds, 
you can go and get some modest, you know, some modest luxuries. I, I traded up from a, like, a 1995 Pathfinder to that Murano that you saw that got it shit kicked in. It's a 2011 Murano, and I've paid it off, but the, the jump between my Pathfinder to the Murano was significant, and I'm literally just taking the money that I would use to pay for my Murano uh, car loan, and I'm putting it into investments. And then when my Murano finally dies, I will have a nice down payment for another car, if not the ability to outright buy another car. So you get what I'm saying? Like you, you can sort of play these mental tricks with yourself to force you to live the same lifestyle that you're accustomed to. And I think with five minutes left, uh, we'll do one last question, or if not, then we will, we will call it a day. Uh, I am always down to clown to talk about finances, by the way. So if you want to DM me, if you have any questions, uh, I'm more than happy to do that, of course. I'm doing that and this previous conversation and this conversation right now in a completely, um, we don't have a business relationship, <laughs> uh, to put it lightly. So I'm doing it in a very casual entertainment sort of way. If you're coming to a pony convention for actual life advice, I don't know about that. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm always down to clown to talk about this. I'm always down to clown to help people with their business. Uh, I'm always down just to, to chat about this kind of stuff. Uh, any last questions in the last four minutes of our time together? And Twitch having a 40 second delay is just incredible. See, everybody typing, that's good. Oh, I'm glad I could uh, glad I could give you guys some food for thought. Financial success stories. I mean, they they wildly vary uh, from from place to place and person to person. Anything from uh, reducing overall debt to paying off credit cards. I have a I have a friend of mine that um, I basically helped her get to just her inflows equaled her outflows and she lives she works in a very stable environment so that's fine but every year she gets a bonus um and so we started to take that bonus and instead of applying it to to anything you know that she wanted to buy we would just take that bonus and just completely eat debt um this month she's now completely debt free uh save for her student loans which are at two percent which doesn't really matter to her uh, she's paid off her car she's paid off the credit card she's paid off the personal loans she's now completely debt free and now she has all of this extra money coming in every month to, to have a lot of fun with. Um, I can tell you some more if, if you want, and that's fine. Setting up a side income as an LLC or Canadian equivalent. Um, I run They Are Small as a sole proprietorship because uh, personally running it as an LLC is not going to be worth the hassle. It, 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 I can run it as a pass-through LLC if I really wanted to. But again, now you're starting to ask tax consequences because that's the only reason why you incorporate in, to begin with is to set it up as tax. So the way I see it, um, the only reason why you need a corporate shell is one of three things. Either one, you don't want to be physically tied to what you do. You want to have a moniker or something along those lines. Number two, it's more advantageous for taxes, in which case you will need to talk to a tax provider. Or number three, you are selling or providing something that provides a significant litigation risk. If you are a masseuse, you're a chiropractor, you're selling bath water, um, whatever it is, uh, you want the corporate legal shell to protect you and your assets personally from anybody suing you for malpractice or sickness or death or something like that. Those are the only reasons why you would need a corporation. Outside of that, if you're a writer, if you're, you know, if you're a songwriter, whatever it is, and, and we're at the level that we're at, again, not making tens of thousands of dollars a year, 
you're just sort of hanging out with me, you know, in like the sub 10k club. Run it as a sole proprietorship. It's totally fine. It's not a big deal. When you do become a big deal, you will run it as a corporation because that will provide tax benefits. So that is my recommendation, and we are exactly at 10 o'clock, and I think we are good to go. Uh, let me just, uh, Catherine, go ahead. So yeah, uh, thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for being here. Um, yeah, it was it was a pleasure.